I did it too quick. We'll need it on in a few minutes. All right, Wes, going to need you to help me in a minute. Um, tonight, let's open our Bibles. We're going to get the book here for a minute tonight. And I really, really hope that you'll, uh, you'll be here Sunday morning and Sunday night. Sunday night, I'm going to deal with one of the most uh, serious subjects there is. Uh, this Sunday night, I'm going to talk about uh, marks and signs of demonic activity in a person's life. And so you don't want to miss that Sunday night. The Bible is the book. It's the book. And it nails it just like it does everything else. You don't have to, you don't have to wonder about any issue. Your Bible's got the answer. Now, tonight, I want to, uh, we're going to start here, I think, in uh, uh, Daniel chapter 12. Book of Daniel chapter 12 tonight. And then I'm going to turn to some other scripture. I'm going to deal with this thing. It's been a few weeks since I've been mentioning it to you. And I told you I was going to try to keep you up to date on it. So tonight I'm going to talk about AI, that's artificial intelligence, and Bible prophecy, and a thing called Neuralink. Neuralink. How many of y'all have heard that term, Neuralink? Raise your hand. Okay. You're getting ready to hear it a whole lot more in, in the next few months. Uh, Nero, Nero, like Link, is linking humans and machines. Y'all, there is so much stuff happening right now to fulfill Bible prophecy, you can't keep up with it. You can't keep up with it so much stuff. Every day, something else rolls on. There, all this UFO disclosure coming up here in a few weeks, they're saying they're going to drop a bomb on us in June, figuratively, figuratively speaking. And I sort of doubt it. I think the government will skirt around it and tell half the truth and leave out about two-thirds of it. That's my opinion. I'll be shocked. But I'm telling you, the way things, who, who would ever thought we'd see what we've seen? I, I, would, uh, I remember when I first started preaching, I preached the Bible. I preached all my life since I was 19 years old. That's all I've done is preach the Bible. And I believe it today just like I believed it then. And uh, I preached in the 80s and 90s and the 2000s. There's going to come a time when the whole world will be gathered together under one ruler, the Antichrist, there will be one world religion. You must bow and worship an image that he'll make, and he will have power to give life under that image, and that you'll be required by law to have a mark in your right hand or in your forehead. It didn't say on. They're going to put a mark on you. They're going to put it in you, in your right hand or in the forehead. And I remember thinking, I know it's going to happen, but I just can't imagine how, how they're going to get the whole world to do something. All these countries hate each other and everybody. Well, I used to say, how are they going to get the whole world? Buddy, we know how now, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Is it hard to see now? The whole world changed this time, since this time last year. And bang, every country... You can, from where you imagine, New Zealand, somebody's watching over there right now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, Canada, Russia, China, Japan, United States, everybody just went right along with whatever somebody said. <laughs> I don't know who's calling the shots, but it's somebody bigger than Joe. Uh, Joe can't call many shots. And uh, I, I, it's somebody bigger than, than, than our government uh, calling shots, y'all. Listen, I, in this church, in this church, when we do things and stuff like that, you don't just upside one day and do it. Somebody's met, somebody's talked, somebody's made decisions. We mentioned it to the church, deacons, leaders, uh, men. And the same way is going on in this world. Somebody somewhere is sitting in some office making big decisions. I don't know about the Illuminati and the uh, Federal Reserve banks and the uh, Rothschilds and and the FDR, uh, ain't that right? That's a man. Uh, uh, the Federation of of uh, 
uh, meeting where they meet all over the world with the elite. Somebody's calling shots. Now we are in a time, look at Daniel chapter 12, and I'm going to show you where we're at. Look at chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time, now what time is that? You're going to see. Michael. So Michael stand up. Michael is the archangel. He is the archangel. There's only one archangel mentioned in the Bible. Most time people say, well, Gabriel's the archangel. Don't say that. Michael is the archangel. Uh, Gabriel might be, but it don't say he is. Uh, Michael's going to stand up. The great prince who standeth for the children of my people. That's Israel. And there shall be a time of trouble. Look at it. That's a great tribulation. Such as was never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people, Israel, the Jews, shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So this is going to be a time like the world's never seen. It's never been that bad. It never will be that bad. And God's going to deal with Israel again. He's dealing with the church now. This is the church age that you and I live in, mainly Jews and Gentiles in the body of Christ. But the day will come when he'll come back to his people. They're going to have a time like they've never had before. And then you're going to have the judgment day at the end of the tribulation. That's verse 2. And many of them uh, are at the end of the millennium. Even the dust shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Here you go, soul winner. Here's your verse for soul winner. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever and ever. That ain't a Hollywood star. That's a Holy Ghost star. And you'll shine forever and ever and ever. You don't have your name. Them people got their names put in them stars out there in Hollywood. I've walked down that street. I always, when, I, when I went out there one time, they said, I said, I want to see that street where all their names are in the star. That took me down. It was the biggest disappointment. People spit on them things. They got mud oil and, and, and dead bugs and dirt. That ain't nothing. Listen, the Lord said, if you'll turn many to righteousness, you will shine like a star forever and ever and ever. Now, look at verse number Four, but thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. See, that's where we're close to now. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What does that mean? People's always learning stuff. What that means is when that time comes, knowledge is just going to go kaboom. And that's the way you'll know you're close. They say that something like 90% of all the scientists who have ever lived are alive today. Think about that. We are learning more now in one day than it took some of us in thousands of years to learn way back in before the last two centuries. There is so much information coming at us today that you, they say that the average the average person now, the average newspaper, I mean, who reads the newspaper anymore? But they say if you get an average copy of, let's say, the New York Times, it's got more information in it than most people ever run across in their whole lifetime hundreds of years ago. We're, we're, in, a, we're in a time, y'all. We are in a time. Now, in, in the last days, it, they're going to come this time where um, you're going to... Uh, uh, Go back to chapter two. Let me show you chapter two. And then, then we'll look. I got a little something I want to show you tonight. Chapter number two. Now, this is during the great tribulation. The Antichrist will be ruling in the world. And during this time, this fourth kingdom here in verse 40, it said, you saw his feet had part of potter's clay and part of iron. Now, somebody tell me what we're made out. We're made out of clay. Dust, dirt. And then iron is a very special material, y'all. That's what you make computer chips and stuff out of. And Iron Iron Man. Why do you think Iron Man is so popular right now? Iron Man movies. Iron Man. All the kids want to be Iron Man. But we're seeing a merging of humans and iron. You will see it? Look at verse number 43. Oh, let's look at 42. And as the toes of the feet that's the last kingdom. It starts out with the head, then the chest, 
then the loins, then the feet, last one, are part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly broken. Verse 43, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they, who's the they? Them 10 kings that rule with the Antichrist, back in this verse is preceding that, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Whoever that they is, is going to mix with humans. And they're a supernatural iron man. And they're going to mix with humans. And then, brother, and they'll not cleave one another. It ain't going to work. This plot ain't going to work. Iron is not mixed with clay. Verse 44. And in the days of these kings, in the days of these kings, the God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom. That's a millennium, right after the tribulation, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it'll break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's the one we're looking for. Now, what they are doing now, and I'm going to show you tonight in a minute, they're mixing iron and clay. Iron and clay. What they're trying to do now is put a computer chip, a Neuralink or a or chip in a person's head. It has all these little wires that, that literally connects to your brain and controls certain part of your brain. Now, Elon Musk, you know, the brilliant, brilliant billionaire. I Personally, I think he's getting some help from somewhere. I, I do. I think that's what I think. I can't prove it. Just like you believe God can show a preacher stuff, right? The devil can show people stuff too. And he's probably giving it to him, some kind of evil spirit or something. You'll see him here in a minute. But they are saying that this is the greatest invention of the 21st century. And it's going to change life more than the cell phone. That's saying a lot. More than cell phones changed our life, we're fixing to really see it change. That's what they're saying. And it could be tested in humans this year, 2021, could be. It's already tested in monkeys and, and pigs, and they're watching out there, and they're saying they're going to uh, apply for a, um, the FDA, apply for a, whatever you call it, to, to get to test it um, on humans and clinical trials. I think that's what they call it. So, it's coming. It's coming. The time's coming when one man's going to rule the world. And if you, you're going to, you're going to have to like, just like you're saying, you can't have the vaccine. You can't come in here and shop. You can't have the vaccine. You can't play in a car or ride in an airplane. You can't ride in a, here, ride a bus or transit or something like that. You know what that's getting us ready for? You know what that's getting us ready for? That's getting us ready for that time when it says, if you don't have the mark, you can't buy or sell. I'm not saying the vaccine's mark. I ain't saying that. I'm just saying it's a step in that direction. It's definitely a step. The Wuhan flu is a step. It's a trial run, y'all. It's a trial. It's a test. You know good and well it's more than just the flu or a sickness. You know it is. You got 99.9% .9 chance of surviving if you're healthy. And I'm not belittling anybody who's passed away with it. Not many have died from it. A lot have died with it. But uh, they, they, I'm not belittling that at all. It breaks our heart. But 99.9% .9 survival if you're a healthy person and you shut the whole world down for it, something else is going on. Something else is going on. I mean, when I first said that, I said, something, I don't you know, smell a rat, brother. And and uh, I'm not, please don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying it's not real. It is real, but it ain't, it ain't, don't justify what, what they're doing and saying. Now, I'm going to show you something here in just a second, but I want to make a couple more comments first. What they're doing is they're saying, uh, they're saying really what this is doing will be uh, make everybody's life better. And what they're saying is this computer chip in your head will be able to heal certain diseases. I'll name them to you. Memory loss, Alzheimer's, dementia, hearing problems, blindness. Now, when Jesus came, the Bible said he healed the sick, he cleansed the deaf, the blind. The Antichrist will do the same thing. 
but he's got, it's a fake, it's a counterfeit. Why do you think call him Antichrist? He's a counterfeit Christ. Depression, paralysis, insomnia, any kind of uh, chronic pain that you have, like back, something like that, seizures, anxiety, addictions. Somebody has an addiction, it fixes your brain to where you don't crave drugs, alcohol, uh, strokes, or brain damage. Elon Musk says it will come with a wireless charging baseball cap that you'll just wear at night or whatever a few hours a day, and it automatically charges it up. You don't have to plug it in a wall or something like you do your phone. This thing, when it comes in, will, will, or you'll have a pillow, something in your pillow at night that charges it up, one of the two. Uh, and they are now put it in monkeys' brains, and these monkeys can play Pong, the video game Pong, ding, ding, ding. Thing, without using their hands. They think it. And here's where it's headed. Here's where it's headed. It is headed eventually so that that chip is connected to your brain and literally you are hooked up to the internet. Anything you want is like that. You talk about hard to watch your kids in, buddy. Can't check that, I don't reckon. Let's, let's look at this a little bit tonight. Make sure I got volume, get my lights out west, just about all of them. And let's look at this. I'm going to let you watch about seven or eight. Maybe and so I will stop it a couple of times. And let's see. I want you to see what's going on. See? What's going on? You know what? If you watch the news, if all you do is watch the news, you don't get the news. You don't get the news watching the news, y'all. Uh, you think the most important thing is what Joe did today. Or you think the most important thing is somebody had a riot in St. Louis. This is the real news. Here we go. Watch this. Make sure we got, y'all have to adjust it back there. Who is hoping this would be a more normal year than the last one because we are only getting weirder from here. All joking aside, Neuralink is already shaping up to be the most significant invention of the 21st century. Bigger than the iPhone bigger than the electric car, this could be the first step towards a technological renaissance that pushes humanity into a golden age. See that? See that counterfeit millennium? It's going to push humanity into a golden age. Here we go. Here we go, folks. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Uh, listen, uh, happy times are here when they shall say peace and safety, Right? Buddy, that's what they're hollering. When they shall say peace and safety. Look at this. Or this is literally the rise of the planet of the apes. It's still early days and could go either way. Hey, Elonites, welcome to the test where we share the latest. Hear what do you call them? Elonites. Call them. Rumors and insights into all things Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk. You're probably already aware that Neuralink is a company that was founded by eccentric billionaire and meme lord Elon Musk, and they make digital implants that are currently going into the skulls of various animal test subjects. The implants allow for a direct wireless interface between the animal's brain and a computer. Elon calls it a Fitbit in your skull, and eventually... Possibly even this year, the Neuralink will be going into human beings. Hear that? Eventually, possibly before the end of this year, that we can put it in human beings. And it it is it's like having your brain connected directly to the internet. You say, I, I don't think I'll ever do that. I read you the scripture a minute ago. Iron and clay. You're gonna mingle iron and clay. That's machine and a man. That's Iron Man. Now, I hope and pray we're gone before we see it, brother. I hope the Lord come tonight and get us out of here. Amen? Uh, but, but if somebody, this will eventually come. We know that this is a project that Elon has been working on for some time now. The company was founded in 2016 by Musk and a group of eight partners who are experts in fields like neurosurgery, electrical engineering, and neurotechnology. For years, all we really knew about this company was that they were working on some kind of a computer chip implant 
for the brain that could do everything from healing neurological diseases like Parkinson's to allowing people to interface with computers and AI technology. And it wasn't until the past year that we really started to get a steady stream of information coming out of Neuralink and got to see what they were actually up to. And that flow of new updates is coming stronger than ever in 2021, with Elon sending out tweets to recruit new employees into Neuralink and talking candidly about his cyborg monkey facility in a clubhouse interview. It's as good a time as any to catch up on all things Neuralink because this is a company that we are going to be hearing about a lot over the coming months. And make sure to drop a like on this video for the brave monkeys who have unwillingly given their bodies over to science. Obviously, we're going to have to wait a while until Neuralink will turn us into all-knowing beings who no longer have any need for news. But in the meantime... That Do that. You won't need no news no more. You'll automatically know everything. What did the devil tell Eve about? You shall be as gods. Little G, you shall be as gods. Now, if you sit there tonight and say, oh, Brother Danny, ain't no use getting all worked up over anything. You're just, you're, you're in denial. You're in denial. People, that's where we are in this world. They're moving on it right now while I'm standing up here. What a time, what a time to be an old time Christian. What a time, what a time to take that gospel and take that Bible out to every creature, preach on the street and, and knock on doors and tell people the greatest story ever told. What a time, y'all. What a time. Now, look, it said you won't even need to know the news. You'll automatically know it. Your head will be a cell phone. You can admit, just think something and pull it up. Sponsor came on the Good Time Show in early February. That's a technology podcast on the invite only Clubhouse app. During the interview, Elon dropped some crazy new info about what he was up to with these brain implants and where they are heading with the technology. Of course, there's the cyborg monkey. Elon told the Good Time Show that he has a Neuralink implanted monkey that can play video games with its mind. No controller needed. The monkey plays Pong with... That's a monkey playing Pong with no controller. Just thinking it. Just thinking it. Watch. Brain waves alone. I'm just going to pause and let that sink in. Elon went on to say that the monkey is very happy. He hasn't been disfigured in any way. They just had to give him a bit of a weird haircut. Apparently, a USDA inspector came in to check on the situation and said that this was the nicest monkey facility she had ever seen in her entire career. According to Elon, at least, we have to take him on his word for now, because aside from that monkey inspector, no one has gotten a look at the latest Neuralink testing. The last we saw was in summer of 2020. That guy, he's the one that started this stuff, and he's one of that Tesla, you know, those Tesla cars and the car that drives itself, stuff like that. And that guy got an IQ of about, I don't know, probably 160, maybe more. Absolute genius. Absolute genius. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking the devil give him this knowledge. And give it. he was born with that brain, then the devil took advantage of Just like a preacher. Preacher's got certain gifts, maybe Maybe he's, and then he gives it to the Lord and the Lord uses it. That's what he done. And he, pro he probably don't even realize it is a devil. Probably. I don't know. But, uh, but it, it, I think it is. I think it is. It's fulfilling the scripture. Watch this. Link brought out a small herd of pigs that had received the image. It was a pretty simple demonstration. Basically, the Neuralink was receiving nerve signals from the pig's nose. And every time the snout touched something, the Neuralink would send signals to a computer, which would in turn make a kind of beeping noise and chart the activity on a graph. It was a neat demo, but not exactly anything breathtaking to witness. Obviously, the two monkeys playing Pong with their minds is going to be a real showstopper, but the pig demo was important in proving that the Neuralink can be safely implanted and removed without killing or crippling the animal. That's obviously something they have to get nailed down before human testing can even be considered.
The ah. implant process isn't super invasive, but it does require a hole being this drilled in the skull in. and tiny Watch. wires connected into the brain. Luckily, the method for installing is almost as genius as the product itself. Elon based the idea for Neuralink's physical connection on the science fiction concept of the neural lace, which comes from a series of books that he likes. The idea was basically for a digital layer that could sit above the brain and would not require extensive surgery to insert. Neuralink achieved that concept by using a sewing machine-like robot to install the... In so when you get it, this robot will actually do the installing. It's completely free of human error that way, supposedly. And the robot will install and sew it in tiny, 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 tiny little wires hooked up to different parts of your brain so that you can you can not be depressed no more. You just think the right thoughts. Uh, there was a movie that they keep talking about and people, they, all this stuff that I studied, they keep bringing it up called the matrix. And I never watched that movie and don't want to have no desire to, and ain't planning on it. You, some of y'all probably did, but it's something about a guy gets all messed up, uh, Keanu Reeves or somebody and they and they're, and he, uh, you can think you can plug it into you. I know Kung Fu and you know it. And you never studied it. You know Japanese. Just think it and you can speak Japanese. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. That's where we're at. That's where we're at, y'all. Mixing iron and clay. Let's go just a little bit further. Plant. After drilling a hole in the skull so that the implant sits flush with the subject's head, the robot will stitch a series of tiny flexible probes into the subject's brain. Each probe contains 48 to 96 wires, and each wire contains 32 electrodes. The machine is capable of inserting up to six probes per minute. The speed that this all happens and the flexible thread-like nature of the probes is what makes this all possible. In previous experiments where rigid probes were inserted into the brain, the body will instantly recognize them as unknown material and generate tissue to push them out. Neuralink has found that when flexible probes are rapidly inserted, it actually minimizes trauma to the brain that can trigger the bounce back reaction. Now that's a lot of science. I know, don't worry. That's about as deep as we're getting into the nerdy stuff. Drop a like on this video if you're still following me. Uh, Hopefully I got that mostly right, but basically this robot is what makes Neuralink safe. It's a fully automated procedure that Listen. takes human error out of the equation. Elon has also said that safety is his first priority in all of this, and that's the same approach he takes with his Tesla vehicles. At the Neuralink presentation with the pigs, Elon talked about how with cars, it is technically legal to ship a vehicle with a one-star safety rating, but Tesla choose to only make cars that are five stars in every category. The same standard will apply to Neuralink. They are working with the FDA to not only meet the guidelines for safety, but to far exceed all the requirements. Now that we know how a Neuralink works, we can get back to what can right, a what Neuralink is? actually do. And that's a concept that is always evolving every time that Elon speaks about it. In the beginning, the application of the brain machine interface in the short term was to treat serious brain diseases with the eventual goal of human enhancement, sometimes called transhumanism. Elon himself once described Neuralink's project overall as helping diagnosis with artificial intelligence. We know that treating neurological disease and injury is still top of mind for Neuralink, and we know that could be heading in the direction of clinical trials starting later this year. You hear that? We got this information from a Twitter exchange that Elon had with a man who was paralyzed from the shoulder. There it is said, if things go well, we might be able to do initial human trials later this year. And that was a few, several days ago. Down due to a car accident and was hopeful about participating in studies with Neuralink. In his Clubhouse interview, Elon gave us an idea of what Neuralink could actually do for a person in this kind of situation. Yep. In the short term, the implant wouldn't be able to give him back control of his body, but it could help to make up for his lost capacity by enabling a person to control an electronic device 
with their mind. Watch this now. Anyone with a Neuralink will be able to interface with a smartphone just by thinking, completely eliminating the keyboard, mouse, and touchscreen from the equation. You hear that? Completely eliminated. The keyboard, the mouse, you can look at it and interact with the computer. And then, if the other person has one, you can communicate thoughts back and forth and even see their... Th Lord, if people start knowing each other's thoughts, somebody's going to get killed quick, ain't they? Can you imagine what a mess this world's headed for? You say, hey, it ain't going to work. The Bible said it would. It said it won't work. It'll fail, but they're going to do it. John says that people are in effect already cyborgs because they have a tertiary digital layer thanks to phones, computers, and applications. Elon okay. said that with a direct neural interface, we can improve the bandwidth between your cortex and your digital tertiary layer by many orders of magnitude, increasing the speed at which people can interact with technology by 1,000 to even 10,000. 10,000 times faster than the way we have to do it now. That's unbelievable. This is serious. This is going on. It's, it's not a movie. This ain't science fiction. This is going on. Look at it. Faster. And in the long term, that connection could expand from your smartphone to allow you to connect directly with other people's brains. Look at that. Eventually, instead of using the smartphone, you click connect directly to other people's brains and send like a citizen in a text. Just think it, send it to them. This is where shit gets. Eight, I Look at this telepathically, and it would be an instant transfer of information. Your brain wouldn't have to waste time compressing an idea into words and speaking. The person on the receiving end wouldn't have to decompress your words into their own brain as an idea. The idea would just transfer instantly, like airdropping a photo from your phone to your laptop, except brain to brain. When you apply that concept to human learning, it means we could just transfer the information straight to your memory. You wouldn't need to read a book or watch a YouTube video. Everything would just be there in your mind. The scene in The Matrix where Neo learns Kung Fu in 30 seconds, that's basically it, but in real life. I know Kung Fu. And as if that wasn't crazy enough, Elon went on to say in that same interview that the Neuralink could hold as a saved state of a person's mind after they have died. A uh, all right. Okay. That's good. Now, give me the lights, Wes. That's, that's enough. Turn that blue one off. Now, did y'all, you know what? That's in a movie 20 years ago or ever how long that was. That means Hollywood is about. 20 years ahead of what's really happening. That also means that as they make in Hollywood, you'll eventually see zombies, demons out roaming the streets, people with sores all over them. The sun turned up seven times hotter than it is now. Uh, the world, I mean, the moon turned to blood. Brother, this old world's in for some bad times, y'all. Thank God you're saved. Thank God you're saved. Every day of your life, you get up and say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, I'm saved by the grace of God Almighty. Listen, y'all, they're planning this thing. Uh, uh, they, they're, they're Just like they're planning no vaccine, no entry, they're planning eventually no computer. And the Bible said in your forehead, I think they'll eventually put it here somewhere, or right here at the top of your hair somewhere to, to the scripture. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, they're they're putting they're pitting us against each other, the wheels and the wheel knots. Somebody said the other day this talking about those that refuse the back. You don't refuse it. You just decide you don't want to do it. That ain't that ain't being a rebel. You decide if you want to buy shoes. You decide if you want to take the flu vaccine. You decide if you want to. You ought to be able to decide what you want to do. It shouldn't be forced on you. And but buddy, we're seeing something different. You know, I heard, I read that Snow White, I don't know if it's true or not, they're saying it. They're going to ban Snow White. Snow White, brother. We ain't going to have nothing left. They're going to ban Snow White because the prince kissed her without her permission. 
That's right. That's right. Uh, Snow White is going to be gone. If listen, if they ever get if they ever get Bugs Bunny, I quit. No, nah, <laughs> if they ever get Tom and Jerry, brother, we're sunk. Uh, but uh, but they Snow White because she's kissed without her permission. What about them little babies at forty five hundred every day that get their arms and legs jerked off without their permission in this country? Revelation 13, let me read you this and we're done. Revelation 13, I just want to bring you up to date on what's happening in the world. I do this every four or five weeks. So look at Revelation 13 here, y'all. They're going to, a man's going to come on this world one day and the Bible said he's going to stand up and have those 10, 10 uh, horns. That's those 10 kings that'll rule with the Antichrist that mingle with the seed of men, some kind of demoniac uh Half man, half creature, sort of sons of God, daughters of men, Genesis 6, something or another. And uh, he's going to do this. And look at verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. That is not an accident. That's in the Bible. One of the reasons the world's going to worship the devil is in the form of the Antichrist is that he's able to heal a deadly wound. Listen, y'all, if a man jumped out of an airplane in Washington, D.C. tomorrow and said, I can go into the cancer wards and heal everybody in there, all they have to do is just do what I tell them, and he healed cancer and he healed strokes and heart attacks and gave everybody brand new life again, they would fall at his feet worshiping him. That's how it's going to happen. And there's going to be another big emergency. And that's the only way you can get people to fall down like that, have an emergency. And they is emergency fixing to happen, buddy. And uh, the Lord, Lord going to get us out of here. So uh, look at verse, chapter 13, verse 15. He had power, see? He had power to give life to the image of the beast. That's a rep him, some kind of machine that the image of the beast, like a robot, should speak and causes not worship those anybody who wouldn't worship the image of the beast should be killed. And then he goes on about the mark. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? That old book I wrote uh, almost 2,000 years ago. And it said one man would rule the world and use a mark in their hand and forehead to do it. Who would have ever thought? Listen, if I didn't believe the Bible, that'd be enough to convince me right there. Whoever wrote that book right there knew the future 2,000 years ago. That was the Holy Ghost. And he's right. He's right. So my message to you tonight is hold on your hat, y'all. Fast your seatbelt. We are fixing to see some turbulence from here on in. And there ain't no telling what. My advice to you, stay in church. Stay right with God. Get involved in every kind of thing you can get involved in. Visit, pray. Take you some tracks back there tonight. Give them out while you can. Witness while you can. The day may be coming and will eventually when we can't. So um, I hope that God uses this to maybe whet your appetite just a little bit about this. And, you know, if I didn't know the Lord, if I didn't know the Lord and know the Bible, what would you think about that? you say, man, that's great, right? you think, my goodness, that's put the mark on me. I don't want to have to carry my wallet around, worry about losing, losing my billfold. You go on vacation, you don't even need nothing. Just right there is everything. Driver's license, everything you're allergic to, all your medical history, right there. That'd be great if you didn't know the Bible. But we know the Bible. And we know what it's going, where it's going. All right, I'm stopping right there. Anybody want to ask something or say something right quick? Do it right quick. Anybody? Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. It sure would. They sent me this thing months ago, and I don't even know what it was now, but they said it might have been Bill Gates. I'll pray for him. I'm having a little marriage trouble right now. Uh, uh, might have been him, one of them guys, they're saying, they were saying that they found the part of your brain that makes you believe in stuff by faith and can get rid of that. Ain't that something? Turn you into an atheist, buddy. 
<laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, that's strong delusion, y'all. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't claim to know all that. I don't even claim to know all about this stuff. I know one thing. We're, it's coming down like this. The UFO disclosure, this stuff, all of it, 2021. It's coming down like this. Anybody else? Right quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, really. Making you do something. It's wrong. Yep, it's wrong. Anybody else, right quick? Wow. Mm. And I hadn't talked to anybody about it. <laughs> weird, ain't it? That's weird. Yeah. Well, I've had two or three people tell me, I don't know if it's true or not. I've had two or three people tell me that their husband and wife would just be talking about something. Let's say football in China or something like that. And it'd pop up on their phone. Like somebody's listening to something. True or not? Has anybody had anything like that happen? You better get rid of that thing. Better forget. Uh, you better leak, distance yourself from that thing. Leave it laying in the other room. I think you ought to leave it on the. Don't don't play the phone all night, y'all. It ain't right. It ain't right. If the Lord wakes you up at three o'clock in the morning, you know what He wants you to do? Pray. Not stay on your phone for two hours. You finally fall back asleep, then you ain't no count the next day. Anybody else? I'm pastor church in Salem area, Mother Day and it's September. Yeah. Well, the Lord has said that Implying if you don't, you don't love people. You shouldn't you shouldn't judge somebody that does, you shouldn't judge somebody that don't. It's totally up to a person, right? That's what it should be. And I have no problem if somebody does it or somebody don't do it. But you shouldn't be made to feel like a murderer. You know, anybody else? All right. We'll stop right there. Um, don't, don't forget now, we're going street preaching again, Lord willing, not this Friday night, but the next Friday night, the 14th, I believe it is. And uh, we'll plan on that. We took, we took a mob out this past Friday night and had a great time. And we'll do it again, Lord willing, next week. Okay? All right. Let's stand. And don't forget now. 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, 10 a.m. All the Sunday school classes will be running, Lord willing, and we can't wait. All right, let's pray, be dismissed, and uh, after this, you're at liberty to go. But Jeff, pray for me.